Well, good morning guys and welcome to another Monroe adventure today. So something a little bit different for you. I'm actually going to do the two annex today via the gondola. So let me know in the comments down below if you think this is cheating or not. But the reason I'm doing this is I actually feel a bit under the weather. I've got the tail end of a cold. So I chose the easiest route possible. So I'll show you what I can see. I'm just at the, I think it's the Nevis Centre here. There's the gondolas there. They aren't actually running yet. About 20 minutes. I've got to wait, I think it's about half past nine they start up. But anyway, I'll tell you more about this route once I'm on the gondola. How's it going? Nice on. Cheers. me on the gondola en route up the first Monroe. It does feel like cheating to be honest. This will take me up to about 650 metres and quite expensive, £24.95 plus £5 for parking down at uh, Nevis Range but yeah when I feel like this, this is really handy today. A good experience too. I'll just show you what I can see. I think I'm actually one of the first ones on the gondolas today. I just hit it as soon as it opened. So you probably know which mountains I'm going to do today. It's actually the seventh and eighth highest mountain in Britain. Unich Beg and Unich Moor. So yeah, looking forward to this. Should take about five hours of walking. Maybe a touch of snow up there too. So I'm just going to enjoy this ride on this gondola and I'll catch up with you once I get out onto the mountain. So the gondola took around 15 minutes to reach the top and it was just a really enjoyable journey, peaceful, with the sound of the birds in the background. So before I knew it, I was out at the top. They actually have a restaurant and cafe up here, but I was on a mission to start walking and head towards this first Monroe. This does feel like cheating. <laughs> I almost feel guilty being out of breath. I must be about 700 metres already. There's the centre that I just came out of there. Some brilliant views here, down to Fort William, in that direction. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this today. Just what I needed. I'm still struggling a bit, as I say, I'm a bit under the weather, but this is a nice short day. So yeah. I'll uh, check back in with you guys once I'm further up. Wow, take a look at this. What a fantastic view. And you might be able to recognize that mountain behind me. I'm pretty sure you will, but that is brilliant. What a view, and it's clear at the top. There's the Monroe. I think that's the top just over there. Big cornice lingering all the way around there. 
But yeah, this has been an enjoyable walk, just an hour to get here. I don't think the snow is going to be an issue, it seems to be melted on the top, so it's just the cornices hanging on, so yeah, not long till I'm at the top of this first Monroe. Well, of all the things I thought I would see at 1200 metres, this wasn't one of them. <laughs> I'll give you a look just now. Some lambs and sheep. <laughs> With big Ben Nevis in the background. I'd make a cracking picture of that, I think. Well, here it is, guys. We're on 259. And that's it, the summit of the eighth highest mountain in Britain. This is Unich Moor or Anik Moor, Unik I think is the Gaelic pronunciation and it's 1,221 metres high. It translates to the big rocky ridge I think, which is interesting as this is actually the smaller of the two hills, which the name of the other one is actually the small ridge hill. It doesn't make much sense to be honest, but anyway, I'll show you some of the views up here. The best view from here by a mile is Ben Nevis and the Carmore Jerigaret just behind it. Spectacular view from this direction. I haven't actually done Carmore Jerig. I have actually done Ben Nevis, but here's a fact for you. It's the only Monroe that I haven't filmed so far, but I'll maybe tell you a bit later, tell you about that a bit later on. The views here are fantastic. And I met some Lovely people at the top there. I think it was Helen and Roddy. Apologies if I got your name wrong. They were actually summit camping at the top of Unich Moor. Oh, brilliant view of Nevis. It just catches the eye. It looks ginormous behind the camera. But I'm going to show you the direction I'm heading just now. So the way I'm going is over to the second Monroe. There's a fair dump of snow on it. So I'm just going to take it as it comes. If I get stuck or that, I don't have crampons with me, so I'm prepared to turn around if I have to. But you just go down to the Bilak here. It's quite narrow, I think, and then up over to the top. Great views into the Memoirs here. I think that's the giant pyramid of Skuravaim. Stob Bam behind it. And would that be the Balahulish Horseshoe? The pyramids behind it? Maybe. But anyway, I'm going to crack on and hopefully make it to the second Monroe. What a place this is. I mean, look at the views in every direction. This fantastic face of the second Monroe for today. Surprisingly narrow, this bit of Bila here. Not wide at all, but yeah, enjoyable. I don't think there's going to be any issues climbing up here. It doesn't look as bad now, I'm a bit closer. Not as much snow as it looked like from that first Monroe. So yeah, it shouldn't be long until I'm at the top. Look at that view. So it was a bit of a steep pull up from the Bilak, but there was no real difficulties. And as I say, that view behind the Nevis was catching the eye the whole way up.
Well, how is that for a view? Absolutely stunning. And here's the top of the seventh highest mountain in Britain. Ooh. Monroe 260. A nice round number. This is Anich Beg or Unich Beg. The proper Gaelic pronunciation. That is bright. I don't have any sunglasses with me. I'm ill prepared today. So this is the seventh highest mountain in Britain, like I say, and it's 1,234 meters high. I think it translates to the Little Ridge Mountain, which is strange considering that this is bigger than the, the Big Ridge Mountain behind it. <laughs> Makes absolutely no sense, but what a view of Nevis, the whole Nevis Massif. I'll give you a look at that just now. That is incredible. What a view. The big cliffs of the north face of Ben Nevis. Carmore Jerig. I'll give you a closer look. You can maybe just see figures at the top there. That is something else. Especially with a bit of blue sky just brightens things up that little bit. Oh, fantastic. I could sit and watch that all day. Yeah, and a little effort to get up here. It's taken me maybe two hours, two hours 15 to get here. I say this whole route will take about four and a half to five hours. There's also a great view here out to the Memoirs with Stob Ban, Skuravaim, and Bodak, the whole ring of steel on show there. There must be 50 Monroes in the frame there. I'm not even going to start to try and name them all, but yeah. So I'll tell you a bit about. Ben Nevis and why it's the only Monroe that I've not filmed so far. So a couple of years ago I was with uh, a couple of friends and I climbed Ben Nevis via the ledge route. I promised myself I wouldn't go to the summit and touch the top. I'd save it and video the whole route but I just couldn't help myself. So I do have a video of it. I think it was my 154th Monroe. I'll check that. But yeah, one eagle-eyed viewer actually noticed I skipped that Monroe, so well done to you. But my plan is that I am going to do Carmel Jerig, the Array and Ben Nevis. Now, I have a bit of a plan here that Carmel Jerig might be my final Monroe, or Ancelic, that's the two I'm stuck between. So I might do Carmel Jerig, it's a nice one for family to join too, quite straightforward to get up there, and they don't have to do the ridge to Ben Nevis even though I probably will if I do it that way, but yeah, that's why I didn't film Ben Nevis. So I'm just gonna chill out here for a bit, take in some of these views. And yeah, the last gondola's at 4.15, so I've got plenty of time. I think it's about 12.30 now. Look at that view over to the grey corners as well, lit up by the sun now. Couldn't see it that well while it was dull, but now the sun's out. Get a good view of that. I think I've spent long enough here. Some nice blue skies just beginning to show. But it's been brilliant. Not a breath of wind up here either. Doesn't get much better than this, does it? But anyway, the way I'm going is straight back the way I came, back to the gondola. Shouldn't take too long, maybe a couple of hours. And then I'll give you my review once, my, once I'm making my way back down to the Nevis Range.
So is it cheating getting the gondola? Honestly, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And this is an experience within itself. Look at that. So anyway, I better give you my rating out of 10 for today. Give that an 8.5, really enjoyed that. That views of Nevis are just brilliant. Epic views all day once you get up high. So yeah, I'd recommend this route to anyone. So that's it for this video. Another 22 Monroes to go. So what I'm gonna do from now is put a list of the remaining Monroes left at the end of this video. I'm looking forward to it. I'm getting close to the end and every one Monroe that I do is a huge chunk off my toe. So yeah, we're finally getting there. So thanks for watching today. I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of this journey in the gondola. I hope you join me for some more Monroes in the next one.